quiet in the city. In the wake of disaster, you are about to enter upon probably the most difficult and yet most important period of your life, when to escape the effects of radioactive fallout for perhaps as long as the next two weeks, you will be deprived of all the conveniences of modern life, when you will live under crowded conditions, almost elbow to elbow with your neighbor, when your diet, your personal hygiene, and other habits will undergo drastic change until the passage of time has decayed radioactive substances and fallout to a point where it will be safe for you to take up your life where you left it. the city, throughout our nation, many millions of people have embarked upon the same experience in survival, aware of the location of the nearest public shelter. Know where this sign is in your neighborhood, for it designates public and privately owned buildings being used for community shelters, marked and licensed with the consent of their owners, and pre-stocked by the federal government with austere supplies for its occupants for a two-week period. Food. Water. Sanitation supplies. Medical kits. Radiological monitoring equipment. In sum, just enough supplies to meet your basic needs to sustain your life. It is quiet in the suburbs. In the wake of disaster, you and members of your family are entering upon your own experience in survival, in your own home shelter. Pre-stocked with food and water supplies, enjoying certain comforts denied those who will live out this period in a public shelter. But wholly dependent on your own decisions, in fact, strictly on your own, for your existence until it is safe for you to leave the shelter. In both situations, the public shelter and the home shelter, the principles of healthful living are the same. This film will show you what you may expect in shelter living. It will examine important principles of sanitation and hygiene which, if adhered to, will mean that you can emerge from an abnormal period of crowded living more than just alive. Instead, ready and physically able to work with your neighbors to restore your normal way of life. When you go to the public shelter, don't bring too many things with you. However, if you're the parent of an infant child, you'll have to bring formulas and other baby foods. And if you have certain dietary needs, you'll have to bring these special foods along, although they should be foods that do not require cooking. In fact, don't bring anything that needs cooking. That also goes for perishable foods. They'll have to be left outside with the shelter manager faced with the problem later on of what to do with them. In short, the less you bring to the public shelter, the better. Your home for perhaps the next two weeks. Not all community shelters will look the same or be outfitted the same. Some will have bunks or cots. Some will provide blankets. Some may have, in addition to the austere food and water supplies provided by the federal government, supplementary supplies along with the means of preparing and serving them. Nevertheless, Though there is no standard interior or uniform provisioning for the public shelter, there will be, even in minimal conditions, 
the essentials to get you through this most important period. Waiting out decay of dangerous radioactive fallout from a nuclear disaster. You've unpacked, taken your bearings. But almost as soon as you've settled down, your youngsters, just as on every other outing, begin to complain of thirst. What do you do for water in a public shelter? Each of these containers holds 70 quarts of drinking water, with 10 drums provided for this 50-person capacity shelter. That means you and everyone else will be allotted three and one-half gallons of drinking water during your shelter stay. Divide 14 days into three and a half gallons and your daily allotment will be little over one quart of water for drinking purposes. However, it's the responsibility of the shelter manager to decide just how much you will receive. <laughs> 